Yeah. And then, okay, our third speaker and the last speaker before the break is uh, Hua Tian the, from Penn State University. And she's the expert of the GCIB SIMS. That is a uh, very impressive technique that can be used to uh, determine, uh, detect the protein and uh, the protein repeats and uh, metabolites in the micrometer uh, spatial resolution. And okay, so I'm, I'm personally impressed by her work that the showings are um, uh, the intermediate accumulation in the particular uh, micro domains of the cells. Um, the cytosol that is really impressive work, and I, I'm looking forward to hear the newest results. Uh, okay, thank you for the introduction. I will share my screen just a second. Uh, here we go. Uh, Sorry, can you see my screen now? No, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the uh, in invitation. I have very limited experience with plants, but Chris thought the technology I developed for single mammalian cell imaging can be easily translated to plant cell imaging. So here I am. Uh, so cells in a culture or in the content of tissue contain heterogeneous population cells and chemical flux. Uh, they divide, in, interact, and form functional structure. So more and more researchers are switched to single cell spatial omics to address this uh, uh, complexity. Uh, recent years, we see an uh, explosive development of spatial omics to uh, like codex, murfish, nanostring, maybe TOF for uh, like proteomics, genetics, and uh, transcriptomics, uh, but a spatial lipid, uh, uh, lipidomic and uh, uh, meta metabolomics are still understudied. Even, uh, even now, we know better about their important function. Uh, so lipids not only as block of uh, not only as building block of a cell membrane, but also play important roles in signaling uh, regulation, inflammatory and the cancer together with the final output of a cellular process, uh, the metabolites, they might be a more accurate repre uh, representation of cell state. Uh, however, the metabolites are dynamic and the transit uh, in biologic system, they are difficult to preserve and no biologic approach to tag them for imaging. Uh, imaging mass back are promising, uh, are promising tools uh, by simultaneously imaging the multiple species, but the variation in spatial resolution, mo molecular coverage, and uh, incompatibility of sample preparation still present big challenges for multi-omics image in single cells. So isomers and isobars also complicate the assignment. Uh, today, I would like to present a new development or guest cluster I'm being uh, secondary IMS spectrometry short as GCIB SIMS with cryogenic workflow for uh, spatial omics in single cells. Uh, of course, this is not an all-in-one solution for all the challenges, but a good start to spatially imaging these small molecules in cells at their uh, near nature state. Uh, so I, in the following, I will brief through the technique uh, development and uh, showcases some application in cancer cells and uh, tissue with computational development for data processing. Uh, so, oh, sorry, I think I, I shared the wrong slides. Uh, sorry, I don't know uh, why I have it. Uh, this is my uh, oh can you see my slides now okay uh, so uh, for imaging 
for imaging mass spec, spatial resolution and the chemical sensitivity are probably the most important aspects, uh, which are determined by desorption uh, ionization source. To better understand um, where the GCIB seems at, I plotted uh, some uh, IMS tools by, uh, uh, by their spatial resolution and the molecular information. Of course, this is not an exhaustive list, just the uh, uh, most widely used tools here. And some representative image from different groups. Uh, from this plot, it seems like a spatial resolution and the molecular coverage are incompatible features. For example, uh, liquid solvent being based the LISA and the DESI, a little being based the MODI imaging. Uh, can cover like larger molecules like a protein, but the spatial resolution usually uh, not a single cell uh, resolution uh, around 50 to 200 micron. Um, Caprioli and the Spangler group also published on high resolution transmission geometry model at one to four micron. Uh, and seems like to the right use atomic beams like uh, Based mass scissor can image cells in great detail, but only fragment and isotope labels can be detected, and the sample prep can be intense. This is probably the first impression people have to think so it's a low mass detection too. But with the high energy GCIB, I have been developing the mass range extended uh, extended to around ten. I'm always a ten sorry. 10,000 covering peptide lipids, metabolites, and some uh, multiple charged protein ions. Uh, the low chemical uh, damage of this uh, beam makes 3D imaging with one beam uh, um, uh, feasible, and the cryogenic workflow as a routine analysis for bell samples is better, especially to preserve transit and dynamic small molecules like uh, meta metabolites. Uh, so all this make GCIB seems better positioned for single cell omics. However, GCIB was not used for imaging uh, like a few years ago. I started work on GCIB uh, by methodology development and a technical renovation uh, after joining a uh, winner grant group at Penn State. I will briefly discuss why GCIB and how to achieve a single cell resolution. So this, uh, uh, this chart here is uh, how to generate uh, 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 GCIB beams. Um, and so firstly, the GCIB can generate intact molecule species. However, due to the less energy carried out by each gas molecule, the beam suffers the low ionization and technically it's difficult to focus. So to make it useful for subcellular imaging, uh, I have to improve the chemical sensitivity and the focus. The strategy I came up was to tune in the beam chemistry. Uh, the cluster is formed by passing a high pressure gas through a small aperture here, going through the supersonic uh, expansion process where a thousand gas molecule cluster to pass through a skimmer. The cluster is ionized and accelerated onto the sample surface. The process offers some flexibility to explore the gas mixture. For example, uh, I can infuse methane hydrochloride, ammonium, and carbon dioxide, uh, and all uh, this can enhance the uh, this can produce extra protons to enhance the protonated and the deprotonated molecules. Uh, or we can use like alternative, uh, like a CO2 cluster or water cluster. Uh, 
this sim simple strategy works very well. Like we see the enhance the ionization, reduce the matrix effects by less salt suppression in bell matrices, and better focus, especially by CO2 cluster B. Uh, I will not go through the details, but uh, uh, rather, rather show some results uh, later. So here just quickly show the uh, switch to CO2 beam, we can enhance the switch uh, to CO2 cluster ion beam from argon. We can easily enhance the uh, ionization by two times. This tested by the grid image, the ICM uh, grid image. Uh, but with our old system, there's no uh, room to improve. So inspired by others' work like Fletcher and Matsu, we started to uh, uh, like uh, uh, consider construct a new system. Uh, this is the outcome, the high energy GCIB in collaboration with uh, uh, ion an optic. So we did uh, this system finally run in 2018. We did many uh, very systematic fundamental uh, characterization of this system. Uh, I will not show the detail, uh, but I would like to show some uh, cell images. The left one uh, was by 20 kV argon 2000, our old system, we hardly see any cells. The right is, uh, um, uh, and, and I think it's a new neurona, uh, mouse hippocampus neurona cells by the new system, 70 kV CO2 10,000 cluster. We see very clear the cell definition and uh, 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 flagellum. I measured the average one micron beam spot on a, a 1000 mesh ICM grid. Uh, and uh, uh, most importantly, we can see in text about molecules uh, like a green here is a uh, uh, phosphatidyl linocyto uh, 3824, that's 8, 885. Um, uh, and the magenta is a cardiolipin species around I'm worthy 15,000, uh, 1,500, sorry. Uh, blue is the sugar phosphate backbone in, uh, uh, for the nuclear. So this is uh, the first time we actually can image the intact cardiolipin uh, in single cells, which is uh, ha has very important biologic function and um, mitochondria exclusively. Um, and so the director, uh, this just show the uh, comparison of the spectra from the cell surface. So with the new system, we have better molecule coverage to up to like uh, I'm already 5,000 and less fragmentation uh, compared with our old system. So, uh, and uh, uh, to improve the ionization uh, further, I tested the water cluster I'm being with our new system. This is a collaboration with uh, Sadia and uh, Professor Wickman in uh, uh, UK Manchester. Um, this table here uh, uh, compared the ionization trails with different beam at different energy. By running water cluster ion beam at 70 keV, we gain up to six times enhancement compared with the C60 and argon cluster. Uh, the real benefit to run this at one micron is the cellular uh, is is the uh, one micron focus for cell image. Uh, another thing to note here: the cluster si uh, cluster size is not the larger the better. Uh, if go a larger cluster, the signal might drop because the ionization reduced. So all these fundamental studies shows the high energy GCIB has better position for cellular image due to the one micron focus uh, without compromise compromise the chemical sensitivity. So I would like to show quickly the, uh, the instrument uh, I'm using. It's a uh, 
a bunch of tough themes instrument which helps to maximize the advantage of JCIV. Uh, this is the picture is how the instrument layout in the lab. We have JCIV, C60, helium beam, and the electron beam for different uh, function. Um, and we have I have a, a quick I know animation here uh, so we run the beam a uh, semi-continuous beam uh, and the ionized the analyze will be uh, extracted extracted and turned into buncher then analyze separated and analyzed in a top and we have a small clearance cell for the tandem mass uh, uh, Imaging and for the three D imaging here, I have uh, I I want to just uh, mention we just use one beam to continue the sputter and acquisition, so no uh, material is wasted. Uh, so some unique features of this. Uh, uh, system because it's a semi-continuous beam, so it's faster. And with this uh, uh, high energy JCIB, uh, we have a uh, extended mass range and 3D imaging at one 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 micron. The bunch of tough uh, decouple the topography with the mass resolution, so we run high mass resolution and high spatial resolution same time. And uh, the cryogenic uh, handling system. Um, uh, in this instrument, also uh, we we see the glow box and uh, uh, liquid liquid nitrogen cooled uh, prepare uh, prepare uh, preparation stage and analyze stage. Uh, same time we have an automatic uh, sample transfer to guarantee a uh, contamination and hassle-free handling of frozen hydrated samples. Uh, so they say the the uh, before getting into the application, I would like just. Uh, quickly talk about the importance of a cryogenic, uh, cryogenic uh, sample prep. This is uh, just a, a, a workflow of a cryogenic sample prep. It's a pretty standard biologic uh, procedure to get the tissue section and the cultured cells and then cryofix in liquid Items, then analyze at liquid nitrogen temperature. Uh, it seems quite a simple, but we have to take some uh, precaution to prevent the surface contamination. So uh, we don't recommend use chemical fixation uh, or drying procedure because the uh, this localization of some small analyze, which I will show a quick comparison. Uh, comparison. So this is the uh, spectra from the cell surface. Top is chemically fixed. The bottom is uh, from hydration. We see Im immediately some lipids uh, externalized as in this blue box compared with the frozen hydrated cells. Uh, and also we see with the water beam as a frozen hydration, uh, there's a, a signal enhancement of this cardiolipin species and some like P species in the uh, red box. Uh, and for the uh, cellular image, it's different story because with the uh, glutara dehydrate, fixed cells, the small uh, metabolites uh, like uh, AMP uh, present by the magenta color here actually leaked out from cellular region, which is by the uh, PI species in green. But in frozen hydration, it's well retained in the cellular region. And uh, oh, it's not just one metabolite, it's like a range of small metabolites all, all showing the same phenomenon. So if the spatial distribution of metabolites matters to your study, especially at the uh, single cell resolution, uh, frozen hydration will be a better sample prep. Uh, so getting to our, uh, oh, oh my God. 
right. Uh, so getting to the application, the first example is the uh, single cell met uh, metabolomics to catch the purely metabolon in the HALA cells. So this uh, uh, pu pu purinosum actually proposed by uh, Steve Bankovic group in Penn State they found this protein complex formed in cancer cells. Uh, in cancer cells, as shown in the uh, fluorescence image here by the green puncture, uh, which carries out the de novo purity biosynthesis. That's a 10 step uh, biosynthesis, uh, biosynthesis procedure. Um, so they also use a super resolution storm uh, to see this complex actually associated with a mitochondria. Uh, so normally the cell actually go, go this salvage pathway to recycle the nuclear degeneration to generate a uh, building block of nucleotide. Uh, of course, purism are mainly in cancer cells or neuron cells to meet with high demand energy consumption consumption. So it's important to understand uh, the uh, metabolic pathway and find the new regu uh, regulatory approaches. Uh, these questions uh, they want to answer use the light microscopy uh, and how chemical re reaction is carried out in puranism in a localized or diffused uh, manner. So the purinosome is around one micron. So the GCIB seems has the right spatial resolution to probe this uh, complex. And uh, the chemical sensitivity is enough to uh, localize the different small molecules in the complex. But one issue is the mass resolution. Uh, that's probably not enough to resolve all the small uh, intermediate and, and the product. So I propose to do isotope labeling. Uh, if the uh, purinosum um, works like a metabolon uh, to channel through all the reaction, the isotope labeling we infuse in the culture media will be incorporated in uh, through the mitochondria interaction, like N15 serum interaction with the mitochondria. Then N15 glassy will be incorporated into de novo bio, pure biosynthesis. We will say the mass shifted C car, A car, and AMP and ATP. And we did some uh, preliminary uh, uh, like uh, testing with different isotope labeling, and we see the uh, shift uh, as expected in the HALA cells. This gave us confidence to localize this uh, acre. Time, time is running out, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh, so we actually uh, can localize with the 3D imaging, we actually can localize the A car and the C car in the cells. And also different, just one minute, just different uh, metabolites in, uh, uh, in their subcellular localization. And we did a, a statistic analysis because the uh, sky chemical sensitivity in each pixel, and we see in the uh, uh, N15 enriched the A car pixel, there's uh, enhancement is. Uh, of N15 enriched AMP and ATP. That means this process, uh, this biosynthesis carried out in a localized manner and the channel through in this protein complex. While in the control cells, we, we don't see this uh, phenomenon. Uh, so yeah, I don't have a, a, a like a time. So I just uh, wrap up, I'm not talk about the, uh, cancer cell imaging, uh, cancer tissue imaging. So, so to uh, wrap up, so I hope I can, uh, my talk today present you a novel development in mass uh, spec imaging field. Uh, this GCIB seems can offer the high chemical sensitivity and the high spatial resolution. And uh, it can do uh, multi-omics imaging 
at the single cell level. For the future perspective, uh, I, I would like to focus on the protein generation with the water cluster ion beam that will bring all the uh, different omics in the same cell, uh, in the same sample at single cell level. Uh, actually, the work on the uh, cancer tissue imaging I did, but I don't have time to present. I, I, I can integrate the uh, lipidomics, uh, uh, metabolomics, and the targeted protein uh, in the same uh, tissue and in the same cell. So, for this, I would like to thank my collabor uh, collaborators uh, in Manchester, Penn State, and Columbia University, and funding resources from NIH and technical support from Anoptic. Uh, and the cancer tissue is from the Bell Bank in Penn State. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Very fantastic result. And uh, we have one quick question from panelists. And uh, Inger asked, uh, the, do you detect intact molecular ions with uh, J105? Uh, intact molecular ions, do you mean like uh, 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 like lipids or, or protein? We detect many intact uh, lipid ions up to uh, up to like two thousand. I'm already two thousand, and now we can generate the multiple charged protein ions, like the image uh, spectra I showed the last slide. That's the multiple uh, single charged and the multiple charged uh, uh, insulin ions. That's double strand insulin. So the molecular ion so uh, is uh, uh, at six thousand. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for a very nice talk. And then 